Welcome everyone to the channel oh, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today um, I want to continue introducing some of the concepts that I practice here. I'm living here in my small apartment. As you may know I live here in Seoul, South Korea and it's and there's a lot of people here because there's lots of people. Um, people live tend to live in smaller spaces to save on land etc. And bigger spaces also require a lot more money compared to Canada or the United States. Um, but anyway, since this is my situation here and I'm the owner of, um, or butler of four cats, I wanted to share some of these um, concepts with you guys so that your time with your cats might be more enjoyable and uh, productive. Um, so let's get to it. The first concept that I have to introduce is the concept of predictability. And uh, what does predictability mean? Predictability means to know um, when your cat is active and when your cat is maybe less active during the day. Um, for example, you don't want your cats to be playing um, roughhousing during the nighttime because if you're living in a studio apartment, that you, you don't have any separation from you or your cats. That means if your cats are roughhousing in the night, you're not going to get any sleep. But what do you do? You wake up. You wake up and give, that, give them your attention. So what does that reinforce? Oh, it reinforces, oh, if I play during nighttime, my master's gonna wake up and play with me. You create an unintentional positive loop. Uh, and that's why it's so difficult to um, change a cat because they create these um, routines without you ever even knowing it. So it's best to start early and you have to do it quite consistently. <laughs> oh. Hello, out there. Oh, uh, having a Bengal is a little bit harder. <laughs> Bengals are known to be a very high energy, very, a little bit unpredictable with their energy at times, but uh, eventually even they learn the routine and they learn how to uh, manage their energy levels based on your lifestyle and based on um, how you guide them within your schedule. So how can you create more predictable cats? Well, as I explained in my last videos, it's all about you know having a schedule for play and having a schedule for food, right? Because cats follow a distinct cycle. They play, then they eat, then they clean themselves by grooming. And through that cycle, they have high energy and then they release their energy and then they eat to recoup that energy and by recouping that energy they have to sleep by consistently doing this day per day or every two days their energy levels will eventually adapt to this um, new cycle or new routine that you've given them um, for example I like many people go to work at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. and then I come home around 5 p.m. so my schedule is that you know, I, when I come home, I want to be able to play with my cats. I want to be able to um, uh, make them more active when I come home. So, what do I do? I'll play with them um, for 15, 20 minutes, and then they'll be able to release their energy. Then I'll give them a, give them a snack. Um, nothing substantial, but I'll give them a little bit of reward for playing with me and being active. And then as time goes on, closer to the time when I go to bed, I'll give them a really good play session, maybe 20 minutes. Um, cats are instinctually, um, they are more uh, sp um, sprinters. So they'll, they'll play in a very short spurts, not for long periods of time. So all they need is 20, 30 minutes. And then you give them a really nice meal, very big hearty meal so that they can recoup their energy. They'll clean themselves and then they'll head to sleep for the rest of the night and that's the uh, that's the ideal situation of course as we as we begin this routine they'll um, sometimes break out of it they'll sometimes wake up and be rowdy but as you continue being consistent with the routine 
they will learn your lifestyle and they will learn to adapt to your um, guidances that you give them. As cat owners or bundlers, we tend to have a lot of different toys and uh, it's usually all over the floor or you know strewn everywhere so that we hope that our cats can find it and play with it. The more you leave stuff on the ground and the more toys you have, the more cats seem to be um, disinterested in it. They seem to ignore it for the most part, right? Every toy that you buy, oh, they're interested for maybe five, 10 minutes. And then all of a sudden, the next day, oh, they don't care about it anymore. So and you feel like, oh, I have to keep going and buy these new toys every time. But uh, I feel that you don't have to do that. And it's um, not exactly the case. I'd like to introduce the concept of toy cycling. And what toy cycling is, is that um, you observe what your cat's favorite toys are, maybe five to six toys uh, that they really, really like. And then you put them all away. The next day, you take out one or two of those favorite toys so that they can experience them again. They're like, oh, this seems a little bit different than what I had last time. And then the next day, you put those toys away and then introduce the next one or two toys that are within that favorite toy reserve. What I like to do is maybe spray the toys with a little catnip. That's a very easy way for the cats to experience these toys again. Oh, this smells different. I'm gonna, you know, bat it around for a few minutes and release their energy that way. Or another way is put these toys into small um, boxes or containers. They'll try to take them out and, you know, problem solve and release uh, some of their uh, hunting instinctual needs that way, right? So there's many, many ways that you could do this to be more creative. Tie the toy around a string on a rack or somewhere so that they can try to pull it off of the rack. It really does allow them and allow us create these different situations for them uh, in a way that's new, but at the same time, still very, very uh, efficient in terms of our uh, maybe wallet. The third thing I want to talk about is having a purpose to your elevated areas. Um, having some sort of progression from the lowest point to the highest point in the room. But not only that, to have a purpose to each part. Oh, this place is for sleeping. Oh, this place is for climbing. This place is for playing, that sort of thing. So what I like to do is be able to provide these different areas. So for example, if you see a picture in my room. You can sort of imagine how the cat will get from the lowest point in the room to the highest point in the room. So they'll climb the cat tower to get to the hammock. What is the purpose of the hammock? So that the cats can rest, maybe look outside, see the birds or whatever, and survey the surroundings. And then if they want to get to the highest point, that's the cat cave over here, um, then they can go in there and that's more of a quiet place where they can get away and sleep. For each elevated area, I've created some sort of purpose. Uh, whatever they want to do, they can go there and depending on their feeling at that moment, right? So a lot of people, they have cat towers. A lot of butlers, they're gonna have cat towers, of course. But their cat towers only usually serve one purpose. They'll climb up and then they're gonna sleep on there. There might be like play sort of situations that they can create. If there is no higher thing than the cat tower, if there's no more um, purpose to the cat tower, they're rarely ever going to use it. I view the cat tower as more of a transitioning, transitioning um, furniture so that they can transition from the lowest point to the highest point. So they'll go from the floor and transition to the cat tower and to the higher points in the room. That creates a much more dynamic and makes it a lot more interesting for the cats to climb up and play and use these um, different elevated areas to their liking. The fourth thing that I learned having these cats uh, and uh, you know experiencing these cats is that sometimes you're coming home from work and you're super tired and maybe you're a little bit lazy, but at the same time, you still want to follow the routine that you've um, provided for your cats. So um, what I like to do is to spark their play mode so that they initiate play independently or with the other cats in the room. And uh, to do that, um, I love having um, places that cats can burrow. For example, tunnels and even simple things as boxes. 
and um, you throw something in a box or a tunnel and the other cats are interested so they'll follow each other and because of their movement within the tunnel or the box they'll start to excite each other and then they'll initiate and play on their own so you don't have to do anything but they are still active it's a really great tool for um, for those times when you really need some downtime now this concept goes back to um, again toy cycling if you know you're gonna have a busy day tomorrow or it's gonna be a, quite a tiring day then save the tunnel and save the box for later on that day you take it out let them let the cats go crazy and then once their session is over put it away cycle through the most interesting toys for the most tiring days and um, those are the four big tips and big things that I've learned um, when I was living with my four cats in a very, very small apartment, even smaller than this apartment right now. And this apartment is pretty small, but at least it has that one room over there, right? And uh, there are more things that I've learned that I've written in this article um, here or in the description that I've linked. So uh, if you have the time, please read it, leave a comment, and uh, if you can, and then like this video and subscribe. Thank you and uh, see you in the next video.